Okay, okay, that's nice. Please just share your screen. You'll be sharing the first uh the first PPT. Sorry, the charisma. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So uh while while she is still in the process of sharing our screen, let's just get started right away. Okay, let's just get started right away. Uh, yesterday, you guys submitted your interim submission about your, which is about the track you want to pursue. I have not gone through it so far, but uh, from the interaction in the Slack channel, I can see the careers now was very helpful in in the decision making. However, this morning we'll be just furthering, we'll be further uh, putting you guys through uh, the steps and procedure of choosing your track and providing guidance for you guys. So this morning we will not be doing much. Uh, we we'll just like this session to be a very interactive one. Should you have any question, you can just raise up your hand immediately. If you have any issues while submitting the interim submission, you can just raise it right here. And if you're having any challenges regarding your track selection, this is the right moment for you to speak up. So, however, uh, the exercise for this week, okay. However, the exercises, just a, mom a moment, Fish. However, the exercises for this uh, week is, uh, the submission is less important than, it is important, but it is less important compared to uh, the interactive section. As we really want the best from you guys, so we want you to, really know the track you want to pursue and we want you to be able to identify the skills in relative to the track you want to pursue so regarding that I'd just like to walk you through guys a few uh, procedures so fish you can just speak yeah thanks i don't know how long you've been working uh, in 10 academy but my okay. question is, uh, my question is, uh, how long did, uh, on average, how long did trainees change track while they were, uh, after they have been hired? Okay, like if I, for example, say um, I chose machine learning engineering or data science, or, okay. or I'm sorry, <laughs> data engineering. So how long, for how long did they actually uh, pursue that track, work on that track, and changed to another track on average? Okay. Uh, just like I said in the last session, we once you choose your track, let's say for instance, you choose data engineering and you're able to secure your first uh, global level job. We typically advise our trainees to stay in mm -hmm. that uh, to stay in that track for at least 12 months so once you stay in that job for at least 12 months you've been able to identify the gaps uh which you would like to fill and subsequently that will determine or aid your decision of changing your track or not but at the moment i i think Aaron or mariam are in the best position to answer how long they will need to change their track but what we recommend our trainees to do is if you secure any uh, job, we we typically advise you to stay in that job for at least 12 months. So maybe during the process, you decide that you want to change your track. I really can't say for that, but I will just pass on the questions to Mariam or Aaron, and they will be in the best position to answer that. Yeah, okay. And just to clarify, while uh, Mariam is uh, preparing, uh, I, I I get why you guys are telling us to pursue it for that long, but my real question is somewhat different. My question is from observations, from okay. what you saw, like I am just asking what happened, like what happened to the students or to the trainees? Sorry for that, I'm uh, not going to punish, I hope. But how long does the actual trainees pursued their uh, the track they assumed they wanted in the first place 
it's not okay. a matter of recommendation, but I just wanted to get the data on for how long they have been pursuing this track they chose. They assume okay. it is right for them. Okay, okay. Yes, oh, you sp I, I get the questions. Kind of yeah. Okay, I, I, I get the questions and I'll pass the questions to the training operation. They're in the best position to give us statistics of the trainees uh, switching their tracks or how long they've been able to pursue the track. I'll, I'll just get back to you. Or you can just slack me to send me a reminder and I'll, and I'll pass your questions to the right channel. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. It would be okay. nice, but it's nothing serious. It's just, uh, it's just out of curiosity. It's not, yeah, not much yeah, necessary. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Mohamed, you can just speak, then we go into the session of the day. Yes, uh, I think I want also to, uh, to, to know the answer of Fiseha question. So that will be very benefit for me. Uh, that uh, that that's that's a very thoughtful question. I I really like to get the statistics for you guys to know whether trainees usually uh, change their track or not, and if they do, how many of them, and what is the outcome. I'll let you guys know the outcome of the question, and I'll post it on Slack, or I'll reach out to you guys individually. Thank you for bringing that up, Fish. Uh, moving on to the session of the day. Uh, Morgan, can you just share the slide? Uh, let's just get started. Okay. Uh, moving uh, the tax at hand for this week. Uh, if you've gone through the uh the challenge on the on tenex you observe that your interim submission was just like a brief write-up on why you want to pursue a particular attack a particular tax and why you don't want to pursue the other track other tracks and it's also basically uh the skills that are relevant to the track you want to pursue and the ones you lack that don't make you want to pursue the other two tracks like i said earlier the sub your submission for this week is basic is relatively less important as we really want to know just your skills and not just about grading the submission about the track we want to pursue and how we are going to help you so for the submission of this week what we really want you guys to do is uh from the dog the doc says let me i'll just be reading that out to you no more than two pages in total and you should write it in google document such that we'll be able to give comments so the comment is more important. Like we'll be giving you comments on what you've written down so far. So we encourage you that your submission should be very thought provoking such that anything you think you can just put it down and we'll be able to give individual detailed feedback. So your submission should include uh, why you want to pursue this track like you've done earlier. You should ensure you touch your motivation and your overlap between your skills and uh, what the employer wants. You can just read through and understand. Then the most important part I want to talk about is complete the tables of expertise keyword. You should be able to highlight the, key, uh, the essential keywords you would like to, that you have. And you can just use the template. There's a template in the careers manual. I uh, use the appropriate colors. Uh, you use the appropriate colors to, to identify what is needed in the final submission. Then, uh, importantly, uh, we want you guys to uh, to draft a 50-word summary. This is 50-word summary should be like uh, a 50-word caption that will be able to capture, uh, that will be able to give the employer a clearer picture of whom you are and be able to just know this guy is this in less than 50 words. So that's basically what we're trying to put you guys through this morning. and. Before we start, the first step is uh, your key skills. You should be able to use uh, that section. There's a section on your CV that's, that is usually about your profile summary and it's located at the top. That section says a lot about whom you are. If you have a very good profile summary, your, your CV, will get a, a higher chance and be even more competitive and a lot among lots of other series which is why this session is 
going to hold. So in the case, let's say in the case of uh, machine learning engineering or Web3, it is important that you include skills that the employer wants, but 10, but that 10 academy does not teach, such as back-end engineering or front-end web development. So you understand that these are the skills uh, that is that is that are like requisites for this position. So uh, it is very important that you do include these skills. While you don't have these skills at this moment, it is very important that you work towards uh, strengthening your expertise in this position. Let's say for that for data engineering, if you if you had gone through the flow chart that is in the careers manual, that is a very helpful flow chart. As uh, it indicates, regardless of your skill set. So let's say for data engineering, the most important skills that are required have been outlined here, starting from SQL to MLOps. But the most important ones are it is very important that you have knowledge of databases, ELT, and pipelining tools, MLOps, SQL, and Python. While we are not saying visualization and scripting is less important, they are also important, but with a very uh, strength, with a very strong expertise in the highlighted or bolded uh, skills, you are at the prospect of landing an ideal data engineering job. So these are the areas we want you, the guys that have picked data engineering to further strengthen or further work in. Moving forward to machine learning engineering. Ideally, uh, from experience, we understand that trainees who get, uh, who, learn the who learn machine learning engineering job usually have software engineering background. Although, not all, but a software engineering background is desirable for to learn the machine learning engineering job. And you should be able to have at least a significant level of expertise in machine learning and optimization. While a knowledge of NLP and deep learning and computer vision might be desirable, they are as less important as having a very good testing skills, scripting, MLOps, and a few others. You can just go through this slide, which will be shared with you after this uh, session to be able to know the most important aspects. Moving forward, we'll be talking about Web3. Uh, just like 10 Academy, in recent batches, it has been observed that uh, just a few of the trainees are moved to Web3 engineering. This might be, uh, this is because it's just uh, a new aspect of training in 10 Academy. And we have just few of trainees so far who have moved into this, uh, into this specialization. However, I can't say this is the percentage and this is how well they are doing in job market. I will just reach out to the trainees or they will be in the best position to tell us how well these trainees are doing in this uh, in this session. But ideally, our web engineering trainees usually have a good knowledge of deployment, web programming, front-end web development, and smart contract development. With these skills, you are just good to go. If uh, after all of this, you're still facing a, uh, you're still facing a difficulty in your track selection. You can just reach out to me, or importantly, you can reach out to Aaron. He's the career lead and he's always ready to help. And because this week, basically, like I said, is not about uh, your submissions. You can have a very good grade in your submission and you don't know what you're doing. It is very important that you be realistic with each other and uh, sure it is very important that you will be realistic with each other and know your strengths know your skills and know uh, the requisite skills you have at the moment so going back to the data engineering question uh, slide i would just like to pose uh, a few questions on we have just touched one of us on the call how many of us here selected data engineering? You can just signify by the raise of your hand.
We have one, two, three. We have ten of us. Can I can I add something? Yeah, yeah, sure. You can go on. Yes. Um. Uh, on yesterday, uh, submission, I chose machine learning track, and uh, yesterday I also reached to one of the leading tutors, uh, which is Arun, and he um advised me to to pursue the data engineering track. So how that is going to be, and uh, I'm currently uh, going to pursue the data engineering track. So shall I uh, edit my document and send it again, or? Okay, uh, that's 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 a very good one. Like I said earlier, your submission for this week is just to get an overview of what each trainee really, really want to do. That's why we have an interim submission and we have a final submission. Maybe uh, during the process of your interim submission, you you have in mind that you wanted to do machine learning. Then in the end, maybe after going through, through, through the guide, careers manuals, or you've been able to reach out to your technical tutors or any either of me or Mariam or or Maureen, you were able to change your mind and we were able to advise you accordingly. And you discover that no. Machine learning engineering is not the right track for me. I prefer to go for data engineering. This is a very good one as we've been able to positively impact your decision, which is one of our goal. However, your submission is less important. It will only show that, oh, this is the track this guy has in mind. And it was, he was, he's lacking in these skills and Arun has advised him to go into this particular track. So your submission is less important. Your submission is just like uh, an overview of your motivation, but it's not important to us, to be honest. We just want to get a snapshot, a snapshot of whom you really are. But if at the moment you're interested in going into data engineering, you can just include that in your final submission and say, oh, uh, for the interim submission, my decision was on machine learning engineering. But after a conversation with this, I realized that I lack in this particular aspect I realize that my strength is here. You can just include that in your final submission, and we'll be able to realize that oh, uh, these are the f these are the factors that impacted your decision. But like I said earlier, your submission for this week is less important. It's very important for you to just identify your skills and moving forward, be able to work towards improving those skills. I hope you are clear, Mohammed. Mohamed, uh, did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank earlier you. on, we had we had like ten. Uh, you're welcome. We had like ten, ten of you, who are uh, interested in data engineering, which is good. Uh, among the ten of you, if you know, uh, you have the requisite skills set on the screen, the highlighted ones, which and you're very confident in these skills. Can you just indicate by raising your hand? I'm sorry, what uh, is that? I just want to confirm. We are just 10, 10 guys who are interested in data engineering. And from these skills that have been highlighted on your screen, if you know you are confident in your skill set in this particular area, you can just signify by raising your hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, if 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 you know you have this skill set, but you know uh, your level of expertise is not that strong, you can just raise your hand. Let's see. Okay. Uh, if you know you have these skills, but you need significant improvement, you can just raise your hand. Let's see. okay we have just this uh at, it's 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 very nice that we have been truthful to ourselves if you need now at least we've been able to identify those that need significant improvement or not so now on your own end it is very it is just left for you guys just to work uh tirelessly and try to improve your skills in this area and if you need help you can reach out to any of the technical guys or the career guys because 
Yeah, technical trained uh, tutors are in the best position to let since they have the requisite skill sets and they have experience of what industry is like, they can better advise you and better still. Irene is always there for you. We are always there for you. You've been grouped into uh into two groups. I'll be taking a I will be taking a group and Morgan will be taking a group also. So if you feel you're having any issue, you don't know where you want to go to. You're always welcome to reach any of the career guys and we'll be able to help you. If we don't have answers to your questions, we'll reach who we'll further uh place your questions to those who are more skilled in this area and we're always uh ready to help you. It is very important that we are doing all of this uh skills and gap identification such that by the end of your trainees uh you'll be able uh to at least land uh a role as quick as possible and and our target like i don't said yesterday is just to get to at least to get a significant number of you guys go for interviews and be able to land those jobs so the 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 target is that part six uh we are confident that part six are going to do better than the last part which is why we want you guys to be able to identify your skills and go out as soon as possible so moving forward if you have any if you need any clarification you can just raise your hand okay uh moving forward uh, morgan you can just fast forward the slide and share the other slide also okay so as part of of this week's exercise uh we are also you are ex so expected that you have a 50 word uh summary in your part of your submission why we chose 50 words 50 words can be quite a lot a lot of words but in 50 words if if i was grading your assignment today and the first 50 words of your assignment is great in my head my instinct will tell me this is the grade you're supposed to receive even without reading through the whole of your submission this is just uh i'm just trying to give you an idea of how the introductory part of any document is very important which is why we are working towards improving your 50 word summary which will be at the end of which will be at the beginning of your cv of any of your uh document you submit for employment the purpose of this summary is uh this summary basically is just like a professional statement it is usually at the top of your resume and it describes and highlights your relevant skills and skills experience and achievement instead of the old format of, of just writing your cv instead of the old format of just writing your cv uh it is very important It's very important that you can just uh okay uh apologies i'm having issues with my internet so it's very important that you can just uh you can just make your 50 word summary looks very very good for you be, to be able to add. For instance, uh, this summary should highlight the purpose of your career summary, and it should explain your qualification, your achievements so far for this uh, particular role. It should be convincing enough to to let the hiring manager know what you are looking for and what you intend to achieve in your in your organization. For instance, let's assume I'm your hiring manager. And you submit your CV to me, and your profile summary is is let's say your profile summary is not good enough. However, the content of your CV is outstanding. By me looking at the profile summary, I will be able to picture or have an imaginary view of you in my head 
and I'll be able to tell you this is what this guy can do, this is what this cannot do. Remember, if you are applying for any job, we have thousands of other people who are applying for this job. So, reading through a CV sometimes might be a very tiring uh, uh, procedure. So, it is very important that you strengthen your profile summary to be able to have a competitive edge over others. Moving forward to the next slide. When writing your profile summary, we advise you not to go overboard with your objectives. For example, let's say you are writing your profile summary. We don't want you to go on and start saying you are a seasoned self-starter or you are a detailed oriented team player with 10 years experience. Saying like saying you are a seasoned self-starter or a detailed oriented team player with 10 years experience, I haven't really said anything good about you. The only thing that has been said is you have 10 years of experience, but you didn't tell me which, uh, in which field you have these 10 years of experience. Your 10 years of experience can be maybe in mechanical engineering and civil engineering. You just said you have 10 years of experience. You've not really highlighted this field uh, or the particular area wo where you are skilled. This in general does not highlight anything specific about you. So moving forward, uh, we will, I, will, I will also like to advise you to avoid noting down your responsibility. Noting down your responsibility uh, seems to be an outdated, uh, an outdated format of, of, yeah, an outdated format to include in your profile summary. In general, instead of putting your responsibility on an objective, I advise you to put your accomplishment because it is from these responsibilities and objective you are able to accomplish something. So the accomplishment to me tends to be uh, better, tends to be uh, to put you on a more competitive edge than just in your responsibility. You might be responsible for something and in the end, you didn't really achieve anything. So instead, you should just put a career snap snapshot to give the employer the highlights of your accomplishments. Maybe you project it on, maybe while you attend academy or before then, you've been able to work on 15 different projects. You can just say, oh, I have less than a year of experience and I've been able to work on 10 to 15 machine learning projects where I have done this, done this, but you ensure that there are less than 50 words. Moving on to the next uh, slide, this is what uh, a basic 50 word summary should look like. It comprises of who, who are you? By saying who are you, I'm not saying, to, I'm not telling you to include your name. I'm not saying, okay, I am, I am Sadiq who takes pride in building or, or monitoring data processing. This hasn't really said anything about me. But saying I am a data engineer who takes pride in building and monitoring data processing has said a lot of me. These are said, uh, these are these are talk about my 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 position, my field, and my interests in just a sentence. Because saying I, I am a data engineer, this has given me an overview of who I am. So in the the employer will this definitely be saying oh this guy is a data engineering is a data engineer and is interested in data processing systems so this automatically relates to any data engineering job you want to apply to and moving forward what can you do i am proficient in python sql and bash you you've said what you're proficient in but your level of proficiency is also important if you are very proficient, you can as well look for more compelling adjectives that will give you a competitive chance over others. I am experienced in working with different data pieces. Instead of saying I am experienced in working with this, 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 you can just say I am experienced in working with five or six or more than seven data pieces. This way, you've given yourself a competitive edge more than someone who is just skilled in a particular database. I have also worked with Apache framework, such as this, 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 and this. So this way automatically, this person has talked about his project, what he does, his interest, and his profession in less than 50 words. So you can, from this slide, uh, we've embedded a few examples here. 
which you can just go through and see how you can write your 50 word summary and moving to the next slide this uh is also an example like this one is saying a data engineering with a data engineer with three years of experience in computer programming having a bachelor's degree in computer engineering and have experience in back-end development these these and this this person has also told told us about uh his field his experience and interest but has not really told us about the accomplishments so moving forward the accomplishment is very important as well the last one said i am a junior data engineer with background in oop programming c plus plus this and that experience in visualization data future engineering developing an end-to-end -end data pipeline pipeline this is just 30 words so in my own perspective perspective i can as well just tell this person to just include a few of your accomplishments from the project you've worked on this way you tend to uh, be on a more competitive edge so what we're try trying to see basically is just trying to write things that makes you stand out things that makes you stand out things that are actually true about you because you can't just go and go ahead and put a 50 word summary that is not true about you so you need to be realistic about this and you need to be very conscious when doing this and ensure it is not more than 50 words so at 10 academy we advise a maximum of 50 words i i think that's all for that and you can just go through the uh go through the uh the challenge and you see what is expected overall i think this uh submission is less important but it is very important for you all to have a Asadik are you on the call I can't hear you Okay, so as Sadiq rejoins, I believe that you guys went through the, the challenge exercise and you know what is expected of you for so this week. It's not really about um, getting to just write down things and quickly submit, but rather to identify what you want to do in your career like for the next uh 12 months and it's important for you to just take time that's why um we had an interim for you to um first get an idea of what exactly you want to do this could be maybe sitting down with your peer and discussing or just even just with yourself so um ideally we just want you to be able to understand what exactly you are getting self into as as into your career um putting down your 50 word summary how exactly you're supposed to go about that because once you're able to gather enough information on what you are able to do the kind of skills that you have you will be able to now summarize in 50 words and i know that you have provided um, examples of such 50 word summary but I would just like for you to just um, go through them but do not copy them just be creative um, each and every one of you are unique and your skills are also specific to you how 
you do your work, the kind of projects that you've done before. Um, I remember Mariam had mentioned that once we jump um, onto the other weeks, and we'll be, we'll be able to prepare your resume for the job. You can use um, Ten Academy as an internship as well. Yeah, so for now, if you, if you feel that you're still having an issue in choosing your career track, you are free to either reach out to any of us or even your tech tutors or even Arun, um, if you go ahead and uh, go through the um, careers manual, there's a career, uh, there's a template or other table of expertise keywords you are supposed to fill out. So it's important that you just go through the careers manual. It will, it will be your handbook from now on. Keep it close to you, go through it word by word because it will help you in deciding on what exactly you want to do and it will guide you um so this week it's not as is as intense but we just want you to be on the right track as we are winding up it's it's near to the finish line but we just want you to be prepared and so that by the end of this training you are able to to feel that you have been able to accomplish something and you can jump into a job because the purpose of this training is to prepare, to, pre to prepare you guys for a job, to get your job ready. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask what is not clear. What, I'm sorry, I didn't get the part about the Ten Academy internship. I just heard the word and I didn't know what you meant. Okay, um, this is uh, relevant at the moment, but um, I was just mentioning that in the in the next probably weeks to come, you'll be preparing your resume. And for those who do not have uh, maybe any experience whatsoever, maybe they're still in the university, they've never been to any job and you guys are just wondering, so what kind of experience can I put on my work experience? So you can, you're allowed to use Chen Academy as an internship, but not as a training on your resume, but that is in the coming weeks to come. Yeah, but for now, let's just focus on. Thanks. Choosing your career track, be sure be certain of yourself um the 50 word summary will help you to carve out what it is that you are good at in terms of your skills in terms of the projects that you've been able to complete and do you know and also include um skills such as um if you are good in if you're a team player you know as in apart from the skills that you've acquired in the training or even the tech skills, it's good to highlight um, that you are able to communicate well, you know. It's also important, the soft skills, yeah, they're actually called the soft skills, they're actually very important at the moment. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, let me also reiterate that this phase of our this phase we are at Ten Academy is not just about submission, but it's about preparing to land a job. Because to be honest, if in the end, after months of training, you're not able to land a job, uh, that's that will sound fruitless. So we at Ten Academy we are committed to ensure that your job ready. Uh, we are committed to ensure that you've been able to identify your your gaps and we are also always there to advise and give you suggestion and also preparing you so at this moment we just want you to really be sure about the track you want to pursue and i understand that we have a lot of people over on this call 
who are not even sure of the track they want to pursue despite the flow charts on all the suggestions that have been provided so far so if we have such people you can just reach out to me or any of our assigned trainees that we will be able to have a specialized call with you and be able to check your background critically and be able to advise your advice you on the track you want to pursue but in the meantime do you have anyone on this call who do not know the track they want to pursue you can just signify by raising your hand there is no shame in doing all of this we're only trying to help you if you know you are facing difficulty in selecting your track you can just signify by raising your hand uh no aunt she, she, does that indicate that we all know the track we want to pursue and we have a very strong motivation to us pursuing that track i can just go ahead and select a random and let us know your motivation for pursuing your track and how you think you are fit for that i think i'll just start with Gen generous generous can you just tell us your track your motivation for pursuing that track and how prepared are you to go into the job level um hello good afternoon um so my track is data engineering okay and the reason i chose it is well first of all i don't have a background in software engineering and my experience with front end is also like it. like it's there but it's not really enough to like build a website i think it was in 48 48 hours so no and um, but i love data engineering so far these past two weeks uh, i've really enjoyed doing the challenges and i don't mind going deeper into it for the rest of i think it's 12 months or more yeah thank you no oh, that's 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 a very nice motivation but let's let's assume moving forward you face or uh, you encounter challenges how do you anticipate or how do you uh how do you hope to face these challenges? Um, so right now, I think I'm looking into what other tools that engineers use. And I, I've come across Hadoop a lot. And I think I'll look, I'll ask a tutor if they can help out with that. And uh, I just know there are a lot of tools. That I'll prepare myself to learn. Okay yeah that's that that's one of, that's at least a good motivation your uh, determination to learn and improve your skills will definitely give you a competitive edge over other bright applicants so this are one of the few these are one of the few expectations we want from you guys and we really want you guys to work hard uh strengthen and improve your skills because that is the most important aspect um Mohammed, you can Let's just hear from you. So, um, at the first place when I joined in Academy, uh, I thought I was uh, I will pursue a uh, machine learning track. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. So, um, at the first place, as I said, uh, I I guess that I will uh, pursue the ML um, machine learning track and uh, currently I know that uh, I will pursue the data engineering track. So my first motivation from for the ML for the ML track was contributing uh, to real world uh, solution. And one of uh, the things that I want to contribute was uh, the agricultural sector. So uh, this was my first motivation to join the industry of machine learning, which was um, providing farmers and uh, uh, farmers, yes, with uh, real world uh, solution to help them navigate uh, and monitor their lands and farms so that they could uh, rise the produ productivity of their land and uh, minimize the cost of uh, water and fertilizers. So um, with that motivation, I applied uh, for Ten Academy and also I uh, entered a lot of machine learning courses and attend a lot of conferences. 
so that I could understand where I can I could contribute. So um, when when it comes to choosing the 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 track, I faced uh, a, a big obstacles. Uh, the first place when I applied for uh, for a couple of uh, machine learning roles before I joined an academy, uh, I faced no one, literally no one, uh, get back uh, to me reaching that you have uh, an assessment except one company and it was in Sudan. So uh, uh, at that point, I, I, I know that my CV uh, contain a lot of gaps and I searched uh, for courses that give me the technical background, the, the practical background, uh, not the theoretical background. So um, I kept searching for a lot of courses and I end up, ended up uh, in Ten Academy and uh, at the first glance, I saw that I have potential in Ten Academy. So uh, when also after I joined Ten Academy in the last uh, three weeks, uh, I realized that you need to to see what the market need and to work towards towards uh, fitting the needs of the market. And uh, for me, who, who who is a person uh, which, which come from electrical engineering background who had uh, um, not a lot of but uh, some experience with coding and front end development uh, I could say that uh, my uh, my skills will not fit the machine learning track so in order to fit that track I will I will need to do much effort in the upcoming three months like the effort that I did in the past two months, and that will uh, cost me some time, a, a really big time. So um, at the moment, I have some experience and skills that fit the data engineering track. So why why I could uh, just why I could pursue the data engineering track and get myself familiar with the industry and what is the need of the industry and after one year or after six months i could switch to machine learning track uh at that moment i will will have uh a robust uh, skills in the data engineering and i will gain some insights and uh, hands-on experience in the machine learning track so uh, uh with that i i'm i'm ask you to reflect on my uh, what I have stated uh, previously and to advise me if my points are, or my point of view is right or wrong. I, can you hear me? I think I, I got a few yes. of your points. I got a few of your points. I was over some points on during your conversation, but I think you have, uh, you stated the right, uh, right point and you put you put the website skills into consideration which i believe they are ideal but considering your background i really can't uh, say because on my side my technical expertise in all of these areas are also limited so you can just reach out to me uh, especially we can have uh, a personalized personalized call with you your technical tutors and argon so that way we'll be able to put you or give you a special consideration and we'll be able to uh critically analyze your situation and advise you what uh track best suits you okay i'll make sure to do that okay uh moving forward we have just a few minutes on the call uh do we have i'm just curious do we have anyone uh, because although I've not gone through your interim submission, do you have anyone who selected the Web3 engineering? Signify by the raise of your hand, please, if you know you selected the Web3 engineering. Are we saying there's no one interested in Web3 engineering on this call? or you're shy to 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 see your track okay uh seems I you think, don't have oh uh, okay 
uh, I okay. thought that Andinet uh, would pursue the Web3 because he mentioned that in previous uh, sessions. But, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Andinet, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, yeah, I am uh, pretty much interested in Web3, but uh, yeah, in the short term, uh, the job market is not that uh, like uh, that vast. So uh, I want to like maximize my chance of getting uh, hired like as soon as possible. So I decided to pursue the machine learning uh, route rather than the web three. But like I would definitely do uh, projects and like I would personally like do uh, pursue that in my spare time maybe, but not for like a immediate job uh, search. Like, uh, okay. yeah, that's my, my reason, but I'm okay, okay. interested in that. Okay, I, I, I really, that's, that's a very good choice to be honest. And uh, you, you have a very good uh, justification for your, for your decision. But I would like to ask on the aspect of machine learning engineering, how how skilled do you think you are? Do you think you're on the scale of one to five? How good do you think you are at the moment? Uh, it's very hard to rate yourself. Uh, but uh, I, um, I, I know it's very hard to rate yourself, but to be honest, you're in the best position to rate yourself. Let's, 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 let's be frank because uh, rating yourself, you're, you're being, you're being sincere with yourself and you know your capability and, and you know what you can do so far. So, uh, so how maybe, prepared do you think you are? I would go three, but like there is uh, always room for improvement. So, uh, yeah, three okay. or 3.5 maybe. Okay. Okay. That's, that's good. We, we still have a few weeks and if uh since you don't have any issue in your decision making i will just advise you get acquainted with your technical guys to ac or the route out at which you you become more skilled and you can just take on individual challenges to even get yourself prepared while also working closely with your careers uh tutor to get prepared for your first interview and uh hopefully land a job so it's been an amazing session and a very good chat if you guys feel moving forward if you, you there's need for us to also have conversations about the job market and all the preparation for the job market you can always reach out to me or morgan mariam or Aaron, who we are always ready to come up with uh sessions to have a very interactive session to answer your questions anytime And uh, like you guys requested, uh, I know you, a lot of you wanted a debate between uh, the 10 Academy team and your side. Uh, I would just like to inform you that hopefully very soon we'll be having a debate between 10 Academy team and the trainees. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, do we have anyone also looking forward to the debate? 